you have like a when it comes to writing for people do you have like a any like drummers you'd love to write for one day like a oh who i'd love to write for yeah. well i got a little bit of a chance for that this this summer because uh i did two songs with steve gadd and i i was like i know i i've known steve gadd since i was 17 and i think we went through all of this like growing up in woodstock i i met mike maneri and i used to go to steve gadd's house and listen to um stuff rehearse and all these yeah. guys because um uh, Mike's son Fred was a, a friend of mine, so that oh, was okay. our after-school activity was going to see. Wow, that's not hard. Gad, Gad, and the Brecker brothers rehearsed in his little 375. This is pre Jerry and Tony had moved up here um, part time, so Tony was part of the first steps as well, which oh. was Mala- which was called Lamage. Really, so, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, and then they they originally called themselves Steps, got a deal um in japan and later found out that there already was a band named steps didn't care put the record out anyway got sued and then it became steps ahead oh. but, so that was part of it but yeah the original band, band was warren bernhardt um mike maneri steve gadd um tony levin and um uh who played keys then oh no well, it was warren warren played keys uh, don grolnick was a little bit later uh, david spinoza played guitar mm. so that was the core group that that, that didn't wa- and and that was close to the band that recorded only they added Brecker and Eddie Gomez wound up playing bass instead of Tony because Tony I think probably got Paul Simon around that time so he started working with him or Carly they were also basically Carly Simon's backup band at the time um so yeah so the, you know this is like 78ish or so so it was it was a it was a big learning experience for me. And then I lost touch with a few of them. But Gad had always been a good guy and a friend of mine. And and, and uh, so getting to... And we were originally, he was going to play on Rainbow Gravity, but during the making of the second Lamage record, Warren Bernhardt actually had a heart attack during one of the best piano solos <laughs> I've ever heard. Really? Yeah, he's like... Uh, and he finishes and goes, I'm not feeling so good. So, yeah. Oh, and, my God. Uh, yeah, and so it was crazy. <laughs> So we had to get him to the to the hospital. That we called up his doctor and he said, "Get him to the hospital right away." He didn't look like he was, but he had he had had a heart attack and it was during playing. This was in your studio. Yeah. Oh yep. my god. And so then we had to finish the record without him and and overdub because they had really literally just just played down the record, maybe do a few takes. They wow. Yeah, you know, was very few overdubs. Um, and yeah, and then Gad was always you know I mean he was he was very upset by Warren but once we knew he was going to be okay it's every morning he was pissed in. that Warren had the nerve to have a heart attack yeah I mean, yeah. yeah so things like that or he'd you know he'd walk in in the morning and go uh, uh Angie Graham for Mr. Bernhardt <laughs> oh <my laughs> you know, stuff like that I mean you know but, but we knew he was going to be okay by then yeah. but yeah. Uh, or uh, uh, <laughs> what's the Jeez. other one? Oh, he counts off a song he's going uh, four, three, two, one, clear. <laughs> so, so he's kind of a card, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. But, but in a, in a very loving way, he, you know, yeah. it was it was it was a way to kind of combat some of the stress, and we had to oh, kind yeah. of do it because he was going to be leaving on the road for Clapton for like six months or something, and that's the end of that. No more Gad. 